Hey guys, welcome back. In case you can't tell, I'm sitting in Kentucky. I'm just outside of Park City, Kentucky at the Rock Castle Shooting Center. The Rock Castle Shooting Center is a 2,000 acre park that's dedicated to the shooting sports, but also has features like a winery, a restaurant, a hotel, even a golf course. The Bullpup Forums have a shoot that goes on out here. Actually, this is the first year for the Bullpup Forum shoot, and that's why we're out here this afternoon. We're gonna run over to the range, take a look around, and see what's going on. Hey guys, I'm here with Scott from Steyr Arms, and Scott has with him a couple of Steyr AUG A3s. One of them is a NATO and one of them is a standard. Scott, can you tell us about these rifles? Sure, uh, we're here at the Bullpup Shoot today and uh, the, to benefit the Wounded Warriors Project, and we're here to also promote our Steyr AUG A3 SA. Uh, we have a, our NATO stock version that we brought with us today, and this is the traditional Steyr version uh, with the Steyr magazine. Uh, but uh, you know, the, with the Bullpup uh, versions, I mean, they have the same length barrel as your traditional ARs, but they're really, really fun to shoot. Uh, this is our Steyr AUG A3, and as I mentioned before, this comes with the translucent 30-round magazine. Uh, and this is one that we're going to actually be giving away here today, too, uh, to benefit the Wounded Warriors Project. And then we also have, that we've recently launched, this is our NATO stock version. So it's virtually the same gun, but it actually accepts your traditional AR style magazines. This is the 1.5 Austrian optic uh, that mounts on top of the Picagini rail, but you can also use an ACOG or any other uh, traditional um, optics as well. Uh, this is the Steyr AUG A3 NATO. So both of these versions are available. They do have a cold hammer forged barrel uh, now, and that's one of the things that Steyr's always been known for, right, even in our bolt action rifles. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're really proud of them, and we're here supporting the Wounded Warrior Project, and we're happy to be a part of it. This is a Steyr AUG A3, guys. This is not a semi-automatic rifle. This is a fully automatic Steyr AUG. Show you how the weapon works. First of all, you charge it with the charging handle here, and now it's a two-page trigger. If I push the trigger in, the will fire semi-automatic. Let me show you how that works. Now if I push the trigger all the way to the rear, it goes fully automatic. It's going to fire some controlled bursts. It takes a little bit of getting used to because it really is a very harsh second stage. It'll go through the first stage cycle where it lets off that first round and then it goes into full auto mode. Very controllable, very interesting weapon to shoot. I'm on the line, guys, with a 338 Lapua. This is a bolt pop, bolt pushing rifle made by Desert Tactical. It's called the SRS. See how this thing is shooting. It's also suppressed. It's really cool. Stick the magazine in back here. Because it's a bolt pump, run the bolt home. It's ready to go. Make sure I'm on fire. Wow, that thing's spot on. Hit the rock out there at 100 yards. packs a punch. Now even with this suppressor, it doesn't really have a muzzle brake with the suppressor. The recoil is really dampened by that suppressor. Whacking rocks out there at just about 100 yards. Surprising to see what they do. Hello, my name is Mike Davis. I'm a sales rep for Desert Tactical here to talk to you a little bit about a few of our rifles. We've got our SRS, our mainstay, the one that's been out since 2008, uh, here with us today. We've also got the new beauty here, this is the HTI. These are both bullpup designs, as you can tell. Benefits of the bullpup is the overall length is shorter. Makes it more maneuverable, good things like that. Another benefit to our rifle here is uh, interchangeability. I can quickly, easily change the calibers, go from one caliber to the next. On the SRS, we have uh, eight, eight calibers from the factory. 60 seconds, I can make this a 260 Remington or I made a 338 Lapua. 
With our HTI, we have uh, 50 BMG available right now. We also have 375 Shy Tech. 375 Shy Tech is one of the finest rounds I have shot in a very long time. Uh, with our ammo, Desert Tactical Munitions, 1,910 yards shooting a 14 by 28 inch rock, made it look simple. This is a phenomenal gun. Um, we also do ammunition at Desert Tactical. Uh, we have some of the finest match grade ammunition weapons there, there are out there. I've got my SR Covert here today. Uh, one of the questions I get asked all the time is, does your gun really go back to zero when you convert? So what we're gonna do today is I've got a target about 150 yards out there. I'm gonna take a couple shots. I'm going to completely remove the barrel. I'll put the barrel back in. I'm gonna take a couple more shots and we're gonna see what we get. Ah. Got a first round hit. Got a second round. I might as well explain the caliber conversion while I'm going out there for some of you people that may not know. What I've got is I've got four screws right here. I just simply have to loosen these. I'm using a, a already set 70 inch pound torque wrench. On this other side here, we've got a lock and an unlock. I, chain, I uh, go to unlock here, below the butt pad, I've got, there's a little button, you push that in. Okay. My barrel is completely out of the piston now, that's how I do a caliber change. No hidden tricks, anything like that. It's simple to reinstall. Come back in. Somehow my suppressor got loose. You'll feel it lock in there, put the bolt. Put the bolt, close the bolt, put the butt pad right there. Now I just simply got, there's no particular order you have to go in when you're tightening these down. Just make sure they all get tightened down to 70 inch pounds. All four of them done. And let's see where we end up back at this uh, 12 inch plate at 150 yards. First round hit. This is a Styrog A3, guys. This is the semi-automatic version that's coming in the country now. What's different is Ratworks has put a suppressor on this rifle. This suppressor is very unique in that it's also trapping gases out of the gas system on the rifle itself. You can see the gas is tapping gas directly into the suppressor. Let's fire a few rounds through and see how it works. That's something else. It seems really quiet. I have head, uh, headphones on, but um, yeah, recoil is hardly anything. Hey guys, I'm here with Joe from Red Jacket Firearms. We're taking a look at a new product from Red Jacket. It's a Bullpup 1022 stock. Joe, can you tell us about the stock? Yeah, this is our new Red Jacket Firearms ZK22. It's a drop-in stock for your Ruger 1022. Turns it from a standard carbine into something cooler. It's fully ambidextrous, all the way from the charging handle to the deflector to shoot it left-handed, the mag release, the safety, and the trigger. Everything left-hand capable, right-hand capable, Everything, it's, it's designed around ergonomics and gross motor skills. Shove your hand in it to charge it. You can't fire it with the safety on. If you need the safety off, you know it. Flip it off and it's ready to go. It's got a passive and active safety, so it's drop safe. It's an all around great package. You have QD capable mounts, front, rear, left, and right. So you can move them around, put them wherever you need them. It's 
a great little pack. It's great. It's a lot of fun to shoot. And they retail for how much? They retail for $2.99. Uh, right now we're offering a sale for $2.99. So they can go to the Red Jacket Firearms website and pick one up? Redjacketfirearms.com and you can find the ZK-22 right there. Great. Thanks a lot, Joe. Thanks. This is a 9mm AUG. This is a very rare bird indeed. It's a 9mm conversion kit on a standard pre-band AUG style rifle. This is fully automatic. Same trigger system. Semi-automatic. And then fully automatic. Semi-automatic again. The recoil impulse is completely different. It's more delayed than on the 5.56 version. This is a little chubby. It's a muzzle brake device by Rayworks. We have it here on a Colt M4, which is fully automatic. I'll show you how well this muzzle brake works. I've never fired this before, so it's the first time. I have a Surefire 60 round magazine. That works really well. Zero recoil. Guys, that is something else. It's awesome. This is the IWI Tavor. This rifle is finally coming into the country. This rifle is Israeli service rifle, and it is, of course, as you can see here, a bullpup. The rifle has a number of features that set it apart from other weapons on the market. First of all, some of the features it has that's similar with other bullpups. It has 1913 style rail across the top here. It does have integrated flip-up sights, and the front sight has a tritium post. It has a forward charging handle charge the weapon that locks back on the last round fired. Here's where things get a little bit different. Let's talk about the magazine. Of course, it's a typical bullpup configuration. It has a magazine in the rear and the operating components back here in the rear as well. The trigger pack sets right in here. To change the magazine on the rifle, you grab the magazine as you would like a pistol grip, and this would be your trigger. You just grab it and release the magazine. It pops right out. And this is where it gets really different. When you insert the magazine, you insert it, and if you leave your thumb up, you hit the bolt release, and it chambers that next round. The rifle weighs 7.2 pounds, and the production model will have a 16 and a half inch barrel. That's to meet overall length requirements. The rifle is very handy, very short, very lightweight. You can stay in the firing position for extended periods of time because most of the weight is back here. To disassemble it, you pop out a pin right here, and your bolt group will come out the rear. These two pins will come across, and they're captive pins, and the trigger pack will drop out. The rifle as it's currently configured is for right-hand usage. It ejects out the right-hand side of the rifle. The rifle, however, can be configured for left-hand usage. You'll also notice it's a little bit different than other rifles like the Steyr AUG. It has a brass deflector here, so if you go to fire the rifle left-handed in a CQB type environment, it will kick the brass forward and away from the shooter's face. You don't have to pull your face back from the rifle to protect yourself from hot brass. Also, you can convert it, as I said, to a left-hand use. You buy a left-hand bolt. Here's the ejection port cover. You move the ejection port cover to the other side, you put the left hand bolt in it, and now it becomes a left hand use rifle. The ejection port buffer comes over as well. Over here, you'll see what looks like a key lock. This lock is actually a quick release for the barrel system, so you can drop the barrel out of the rifle very quickly. You turn this and the barrel pulls out. Down here, you'll see the selector, the fire control selector. This one's on the right hand side, it is ambi, so you can move the selector lever to either side of the rifle. And here it is on the other side of the rifle, set up again for right-hand use. Moving forward, we have a sling mount point here. Now, on the production rifles, these will be QD mounts. There'll be one here in the front, and there'll be another one here in the rear. These will also be reversible. You'll be able to put them on either side of the rifle. Moving forward again, the charging handle. When you convert this to a you know, right or left hand usage, you also move your charging handle operation. For left hand usage, it'll move from the left hand side of the rifle to the right hand side of the rifle. The rifle is truly ambidextrous and it is configurable for either right or left hand shooters, probably more so than any other rifle on the market. The rifle is gonna be available in black and flat dark earth, and it's gonna have a nine millimeter conversion kit available for the rifle as well. It's gonna to come to market just under $2,000, at least that's uh, the rumor at the moment. I hope you guys enjoyed taking a tour of the Bullpup Shoot hosted by the Bullpup Forums. You can find the Bullpup Forums at the URL in the description below. 
If you guys have any questions about what we saw out here this afternoon, you can ask those questions on our Facebook page. You can find us on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash military arms. As always, everybody, thanks for watching. Thanks for the subs. We'll talk to you guys soon.